When working as a game developer, every tip and trick to save yourself time and make your life easier counts. And I briefly scoured the internets to find some great Gato Engine tricks and bake them up in a nice bite-sized video so you don't have to. Here are 13 Gato Engine tricks you don't know about in under five minutes, probably. When scripting with GDScript, the editor will offer you hints, reminders, and errors for your code, and typed hints provide the information it needs. Referencing a variable with no type hint will give you a big old nothing. But by giving the variable a type hint, the editor knows what you're referencing and can give you public functions or variables. You can add typed hints by placing a colon after your variable name, and then the variable type. And if you just place a colon, the editor will try to infer the type. If you have a number of nodes on top of one another and you can't quite grab one, you can press Alt and right click on them in the viewport to see a list of the nodes. And at least in the 2D editor, select one of those nodes on the list. This activates the node and then you can go on editing. When coding in the script editor and working with colors, you can use the built-in color function to make selecting colors a bit easier. Simply type out the function, then right-click color to bring up the menu, then click pick color. This will bring up the color picker and whichever color you pick will automatically be filled within your color function. You can also add that color to your swatch and save it for later. If you have any complicated math to do, you can do that right in the editor by evaluating mathematical statements. Write out your extremely hard math problem, highlight it with the mouse, then right click and select evaluate selection or hit control shift E and voila, math solved. If you ever wanted to stop your script at certain points, you can do that with breakpoints. Setting a breakpoint allows you to pause your game and then references your breakpoint and gives you what is called a stack trace, which gives you a bunch of information about what your game is currently doing. You can also hover over any variable before the breakpoint to see the current value, which is a great way to debug variables at certain points of your script. You can set multiple breakpoints in your scripts, pause during gameplay, then continue the script to the next breakpoint when you have the info that you need. There is much more to breakpoints and debugging, but it's good to start thinking about how you can use this feature early. Hate typing out your onReady node variables? By left-clicking the node, then pressing Control and dragging the node to your script, the engine will create the onReady variable for you automatically. Time saved. Another quick fix that some people may not think about. If you're like me and are constantly looking up GDScript references in the engine docs, don't hit the search help, just hit F1 and search for what you need. And if you have a certain function or property that you want to check in the docs, you don't even need to hit F1 and search. Just hover over the code while holding control and left click to go directly to the doc page for that function or variable. You might know that your variables and functions get added to the search help automatically. And if you didn't, then I guess there's a free trick. But did you know that you can add descriptions for your own variables and functions? Simply add two pound signs as a super comment. And whatever you type after that will become the description for the variable below it. You probably use print all the time, but did you know that there are other versions of the print function that you can use? Print debug will also show you the current stack frame. Print stack will print a stack track code at the code location. Print error will print as a standard error line. Print s will print multiple arguments with spaces in between. And print t will print multiple arguments with tabs in between. Have any really big numbers in the editor and it's making it a bit hard to read? You can add underscores in place of commas or points to make the large numbers a bit more readable. The underscores are ignored and the number will read the same. You can quickly switch between the 2D, 3D script and asset tabs by holding control and the F1, F2, F3, and F4 keys. Better yet, add secondary shortcuts like Alt, Q, W, E, and R to make it even easier to switch between the tabs. Head over to the editor settings, shortcuts, then find the open 2D editor, open 3D editor, open asset library, and open script editor shortcuts, and click the plus button to add a secondary shortcut for each. 
And finally, if you ever get tired of the gray-blue color attack that is the editor interface, you can easily adjust the colors of the editor by clicking Editor and Editor Settings. There you'll find various theme tabs for the interface and text editor where you edit the colors of your theme, like adjust the editor background or pretend you're really working in Unreal. If you have any tips or tricks you think would be useful to add to the list, you can comment down below. And if you'd like to know why I think 2023 is the year for the Gato engine, or try some of these tricks while creating a really awesome water shader in Gato 4, check out these videos here.